Well, good morning. It's nice to see at least some of you. Because you're wearing masks, so I can't see all of you. So, welcome. Uh, won't get too uh, much into the announcements because, well, they've already been showing for the last 15 minutes. But uh, I do want to make sure that you know that you're invited to join us on Wednesday nights for our Zoom Bible studies. Uh, this next week we'll be discussing our passage that we will talk about today, which comes from Judges chapter 6, verses 11 through 16. Uh, so you're welcome to join us on Wednesday nights. Also Thursdays, the women's Bible study. I think this week is off, maybe? Yes. Yes. This week is off, and then they'll continue the week after that. And um, also, uh, Sunday morning, uh, Sunday school with John is still taking place from 9 to 10. So you can join uh, them there on, on Zoom. And uh, just in case you are doing that, I also want to let, make sure that you know that uh, if you've received a email in the past inviting you to that, Please hold on to that so that you might go back to it because it's a continuous, the same login every time. So uh, just go to that and you can once again be logged into uh, Sunday School. And we will let, let you know as soon as we can as far as when we will get back together for Wednesday nights and Sunday School and hopefully soon, who knows, maybe even this week, uh, we'll find out if we can get back in and uh, do those. But also continue uh, meeting through uh, Zoom as well. So if you can't get here or if because of illness or whatever else, uh, you're just not ready to get back for a Sunday school or, uh, and if you're watching on uh, Facebook Live or YouTube, you can continue to do that uh, on Facebook or uh, Zoom. So anyway, um, I don't know if there's any other announcements or not. Once again, we do want to keep people safe as you come in. So as we move out round and about, please have your masks on just so that people uh, feel safe. It's up to you how long you keep them on here. I know that we have people with COPD and other things that just make it very difficult uh, to, to breathe with the mask on. So we do want to be respectful of everyone. We will try not to do uh, handshakes and hugs and those sort of things. And you know, it's hard. I saw my, my good friend Dick Simon here this morning and Barb, and it's, it's hard not to give them, well, it's harder to not to give her a hug um, than Dick, but, uh, but even to shake his hand. And uh, So we are blessed that you are all here with us this morning. So uh, I think that's it as far as announcements. Work day next Saturday morning. Work day next Saturday morning. Uh, eight o'clock? Eight o'clock, and there should be a list of things that, that need to be done. And yeah, John, would you like to make an announcement? We're not good for Okay. Okay. Where's Dan? Dan, we want toys next Saturday. Dan's got a bunch of toys that could make that fun. So, all right. Well, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to gather together in your house. And Lord, we know that there are all kinds of things going on in this world that make it very difficult and confusing and uh, all sorts of emotions can be stirred up and uh, Lord we know that each and every one of us has concerns on our minds and on our hearts this morning uh, some of them that bring a smile and some that bring sadness and uh, Father our hope and our goal this, uh, this time together is that we can put all those things aside that we might just spend time in your presence and uh, spend time giving you glory, honor and worship so Lord, we offer you all that we have, Lord, our praises and our worship to you this morning. In your great and awesome name, amen. Stand up and join us in our first song. We're here to meet with him this morning, so we're going to start that. Oh, no. 
I do have a couple of uh, prayer concerns as we go to a time of prayer. Uh, one, we can continue to pray for uh, Dick Hetrick uh, in the healing of, of his foot. And uh, he has been here uh, along with Dale cutting grass. So, right. is it on? Okay. If this is bad, then we'll have to move the other mic up. But you can let me know. Um, so pray for him. He is still doing uh, some work and such and uh, just needs to get his okay from the doctor that he can start to bear weight on it. Uh, also, we'll continue to play, pray for, for Skyler. Uh, and Norm, uh, he had uh, a little procedure this past week. So pray for his uh, recovery. And then Sue has appointments coming up this next week. And uh, we've got to pray that her cancer is gone and a lot of travels and stuff that they have going on over the next three weeks or so. So uh, continue to pray for them as well. Are there any other prayer concerns? Oh, yeah. Well, that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so obviously there's stuff going on around the world that uh, is um, very, very troubling and uh, certainly is, is uh, deserving of, of our prayers and consideration. And uh, one of the things that the, the church needs to remember is that, that we are the church. And the way that we respond to these uh, events is, uh, is important. And we should respond in a way that uh, would be honoring and pleasing uh, to God. It's, it's hard sometimes not to just take sides, one side or the other, uh, but there's good and evil and, uh, on, on every side. And so we need to make sure that we just uh, continue to uh, do the very best we can to represent Christ well and, uh, and be peaceful and be praying for uh, people everywhere during the, this time. Uh, so, and then there's a, there's a gathering in Sharon, uh, supposedly a protest of some sort, supposed to be peaceful. So uh, certainly need to, to pray for that, use wisdom uh, and discernment if you, you know, would like to attend one of those events or to see what it's all about, but just tell me. Oh. All right, well, we may have to use the, that. Um, Christy's getting messages from the people who are online and watching, so we're getting information from them. So, uh, so I think that's it. So we need to keep them, uh, all those events and things in our prayers. Uh, we do need to pray for peace, and yes, we do need to be peacemakers, and we need to do the very best we can to bring uh, and shed light in a world that is very dark. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we praise you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to gather together, and we thank you that we have this place where we can gather, uh, this place that we call church but it's a place where the church assembles. So, Father, we ask that you would give us wisdom and guidance as we navigate these treacherous times, not just with COVID-19, but with the, uh, the, the tension that exists all around us right now. And, Lord, we do pray uh, that, that you would touch hearts right now, that uh, th there is so much violence and so much hurt and pain going on right now, and certainly we can say that people aren't uh, dealing with it the way that they should be, uh, and sometimes it's difficult not being in their shoes to know exactly what it is that they're thinking, but Lord, we pray that those hearts would turn to you. 
that this uh, violence would turn to uh, peaceful communication where people can get their, their thoughts, their ideas, their point across without others experiencing uh, pain and hurt. And uh, Father, help us to love uh, our brothers and sisters uh, of other communities, of other races. Uh, we pray, pray especially for the, the, the black community that feels uh, so hurt and so damaged and so um, just at the, the brunt of the police force and everything else. And uh, Lord, just help us to communicate and love well. And uh, we do pray for those folks in our, in our church who are concerned with their own physical healing and corona and, and everything else. Lord, we ask you would protect them, that as uh, they go about their week, that you would give them wisdom and uh, just provide the protection that they need. We do pray for our, our police forces and our uh, firefighters and first responders. Lord, those who, who put themselves out there to protect us each and every day. And uh, Lord, they are being targeted as well. So Father, we, we ask just that great peace would fall upon this place, uh, the U.S. everywhere. And uh, Father, help us to uh, show the respect um, even even respect that people don't deserve because we too don't reserve, deserve uh, anything from you. We don't deserve your love, your compassion, your forgiveness. Uh, but we thank you, Lord, that while we are still sinners, that Christ died for us. So, Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we ask that you would heal uh, not just the racial wounds and those sort of things, but physical wounds and spiritual wounds. And Lord, all those things that, that we come that, uh, that cause us great grief and pain, we pray that your hand would be upon us all. And Father, uh, as this day goes on, we do pray that you would speak to each and every one of our hearts, that we might become more like you that we would uh, take the word that is, is, is preached and is found throughout Scripture and that we will begin to apply these to our lives and not just to other people's lives. Lord, you are a great and awesome God and you are worthy of all of our praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
going to stand and we're going to sing The Old Rugged Cross. I know this is an old song, but I know it's also a very favorite song of people. <coughs> Don, I think we're going to move to this mic here. Uh, we are trying, for those of you who, who don't know, we still are trying to uh, live stream. We have our friend Nathaniel Carper here uh, helping us out. 
uh, doing the film and, and live streaming and all that. And uh, there's been some complications as far as people hearing me. So as long as I'm down here, they can hear. But once I raise my head, not so much. So we want to do the very best that we can for them, for those that are home and joining us today. Uh, thank you for joining us. And hopefully this works better so that we can all uh, kind of participate and pay attention today. So how many of you, now it was interesting before uh, when I started to write this, uh, the sermon for this morning, none of this stuff was kind of on my radar as far as what's going on around the world today. Uh, and it seems to, to, to relate at least in, in some way. So this certainly isn't any kind of political statement or anything like that. It's simply trying to teach the, the text that we, we have before us. But I do think there is some crossover and, and it does relate at least somewhat. Uh, how many of you would agree that we are experiencing desperate and difficult days as the people of God? Well, the entire book of Judges describes a time that was likewise desperate and difficult days for the people of God. They were living in the promised land. They were witnesses to God's providence and his protection. They experienced incredible events where God displayed his sovereignty and an incredible love for his chosen people. And yet, they strayed from the Lord and forsook him. In an act of divine discipline, God had allowed the Midianites to overpower Israel, and the people suffered mightily. And what we see throughout the time of the judges is that after experiencing great difficulty, God raises up someone to lead his people out of bondage and into victory. Gideon would have been one of the most unlikely or the least likely to be called by God for such a significant task. But God had chosen to use him. Of course, this shouldn't surprise us. We see throughout scripture the Lord using the weak and the inadequate to accomplish his will. For example, David, Jonah, Moses, and others. One of the reasons that I decided to preach these two messages from Judges from last week and this week, when we were getting back together after two and a half months apart, is because it seems to me that we are living in a similar day to that of Gideon's day. The world has abandoned and forsaken God. The church is suffering the effects of evil of the world's influence. These are indeed desperate days, and still today, God is looking for those who will, by faith, stand for him in opposition to the wickedness of our day. If we have any chance of standing firm in the face of opposition, it will require a strong faith and sacrifice on our part. But as we'll find out this morning, it can be done. As I mentioned earlier, Gideon most likely wouldn't have been the first chosen by his peers to lead the charge. In fact, he, he wouldn't have chosen himself either. But it wasn't up to them. It was God's choice. Likewise, we may think that we are unable to fulfill what it is that God has called us to do. But if God calls us to a task, he will empower us to accomplish it. This morning, we are going to find encouragement from Gideon that when God calls you to accomplish a task, that the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. So let's open up our Bibles to Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, starting at verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat underneath under the terebinth of Orpha, which belonged to Joash, the Abiezrite, while his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, Please, sir, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And why are all his wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? 
But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of Midian. And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in, his, in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Did, do I not send you? And he said to him, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, But I will be with you. You shall strike the Midian, Midianites as one man. Now, Gideon, I don't think, was all that different from each and every one of us today. Like us, Gideon had flaws. In fact, fear almost hindered his work for the Lord. If we're ever going to accomplish all that the Lord has called us to, then we too will need to learn to overcome our fears and learn to rely on the Lord. I think that oftentimes our lack of confidence is the greatest hindrance of fulfilling God's work and God's will. Now, obviously, I don't think that we should be arrogant, but I do think we need to have a humble confidence, not in our own abilities, but in the Lord's ability to work through us. Now, we spoke about this in our Bible study on Zoom this past Wednesday night. Our passage mentions the angel of the Lord. Who is the angel of the Lord? Or at least who would it appear that the angel of the Lord is? Come on, if you're on Zoom. Jesus, a pre-incarnate Christ. That's right. So the angel of the Lord comes and finds Gideon beating out wheat in the wine press. Well, that certainly seems like a strange place to beat out or thresh wheat. Our passage says that he did this to hide from the Midianites. But why? Well, if you remember back from our series in the book of Ruth, we spoke about the blessings and curses that we find in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Do these things and I will bless you. Do these things and I will curse you. Well, if, we do, if you were to just kind of briefly take a look at chapter 28, you don't have to, but I'm going to read just from a couple verses. From chapter 28, verse 15. But if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God, or be careful to do all his commandments and his statutes that I command you today, then all these curses shall be upon you and overtake you. And I'll go down to verse 25. The Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You shall go out, you shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. And you shall be a whore to all the kingdoms of the earth. And then verse, part of verse 30, the second part of verse 30. You shall build a house, but you shall not dwell in it. You shall plant a vineyard, but you shall not enjoy its fruit. Your ox shall be slaughtered before your eyes, but you shall not eat any of it. Your donkey shall be seized before your face, but shall not be restored to you. Your sheep, your sheep shall be given to your enemies, but there shall be no one to help you. And then verse 33. A nation that you have not known shall eat up the fruit of your ground and of uh, all your labors, and you shall be only oppressed and crushed continually. So there is great cursing that falls upon Israel for their rebellion against God. And we see this taking place throughout the book of Judges. In fact, the book of Ruth is set within that time of the Judges. So that's partially what they're experiencing at, their, at that time. The Israelites had sinned against the Lord and now they're being cursed for that rebellion. So they are suffering at this time bondage at the hands of the Midianites. And instead of riding on the high places per Deuteronomy 32.13, they were hiding in the dens. During the harvest, the invaders would come and take of the produce. The Israelites were unable to harvest their own grain. This likely explains why we find Gideon overcome with fear, hiding in the winepress. 
Sadly, this is the case for much of the church today. Now, I realize that perhaps it sounds harsh, but I think that we've abandoned the harvest. Not every single Christian, obviously, but collectively. We may do a little work here around the, the church, hidden from the world, afraid of what people might say if they actually find us living out our Christian faith with boldness and confidence. Out of fear, we avoid confrontation and discover that it's much easier to live in stealth mode. As long as the world isn't aware of what we're doing, then we don't have to take a stand for the field. We've grown complacent with the little things that are being done. Now, don't get me wrong. We do see a little grain brought into the storehouse, but much of the harvest remains in the field. Now, I understand that this, is, this task isn't to be taken lightly. After all, if you do decide to go to work in the field, more than likely you will be attacked. But we must, regardless of the danger, labor for the harvest. Upon hearing what it is that God's calling him to do, Gideon immediately begins to question whether it's a worthy task. He complains about the situation that is facing Israel. If God hasn't forsaken us, why has all of this come upon us? Why hasn't God performed a mighty miracle and simply taken care of the Midianites himself? Gideon seems to have accepted the fact that there will be absolutely no end to his suffering. As if this suffering is just God's will for their lives. He's accepted. This is just the way it is. Many times in scripture we read about people who felt as if God had abandoned them. David even felt that way a time or two. And he was a man after God's own heart. It's one of Satan's great schemes to make us believe that God has abandoned us. He wants us to believe that this is the way it is. It has nothing to do or there's nothing we can do to make any difference. But we know that God is sovereign. We know that he can do all things. But make no mistake, he desires for, uh, us to be workers in the harvest. We should never assume that this is just the way it is and that things will never get any better. If you and I aren't willing to stand for the Lord and try to make a difference, who will? I can tell you one thing with absolute certainty. It is never God's will for men to die lost. He wants none to perish. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, speaking of God, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. See, that's one of the great problems in the world today is that people don't know the truth. I'm not talking about your truth and their truth. I'm talking about the truth. Jesus, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. At this point, Gideon begins to questions, question God's choice. Look at my heritage. There's no way I can do, do this. Certainly this is a mistake, Lord. So he questions God's authority. By the way, just in case you're not aware of this, who are we to question the authority of God. After all, God is one, or, or let me ask you this, who knew everything about Gideon? Who knew Gideon's talents? Who knew Gideon's abilities? Who knew everything about Gideon? And who knows, knows everything, and I mean everything, about you and I as well? Listen, Gideon wasn't called because of who he was. And he wasn't expected to stand on his own ability. How many of you have ever heard someone say that God would never ask you to do something that they didn't want to do? That God would never ask them to do something that they're afraid to do or that they didn't have the ability to do? We make all kinds of excuses. God just hasn't called me to do that. 
Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if many of you have either heard this or even used this reasoning themselves. After all, I think this is the type of reasoning that's just part of our human nature. Certainly, there must be someone else who can do this task much better than I can. Who am I that God would choose me for this task? I wonder how many times we've missed out on God's blessings because we've doubted that God can really use us. Gideon looked at himself, like most of us do, from a human perspective. He was focused on his own abilities. Gideon didn't really know what he was capable of. But the God who created Gideon knew. And God knew things about Gideon that Gideon didn't know about himself. I don't know how you feel about yourself this morning. I don't know your level of confidence or the abilities that you may or may not have. But if you're here this morning and you feel like you can't do, for one reason or another, what God has called you to do, I want you to know something very important. There isn't a Christian here today who doesn't have great potential through the Lord to accomplish everything that he has called you to do. The Lord doesn't call us to do that which he isn't also able to equip us to do. All that Gideon saw was himself. All he saw was a heart filled with fear. But God saw a mighty man of valor. The courage required couldn't be found within himself, but it would be given to him by the Lord. How many of you would admit that you really enjoy facing difficult times? Probably not a whole lot of us. But one thing I've learned through observation over the years is that adversity has a way of bringing out the best in people. It's amazing what we can accomplish when we are put to the test. I wonder what we'd be able to accomplish if we just submit to God's will in our lives. Listen, I can tell you that I never imagined that one day I'd be doing what I'm doing. Never dreamed that I'd grow up, that I would one day be a shepherd leading a flock. But I can promise you one thing. I'm not doing this by my own strength, and I am definitely not standing alone, and I'm also certainly not doing it flawlessly. I'm here because God saw in me something that I could not have possibly imagined in myself. I am here because he made it possible. And if you want anyone to blame for me being here, you can look to that side of the sanctuary where my parents are and, and Dick and Barb from their Bible study who prayed for me from when I was a, a little kid. Never, I'm certainly, I'm sure they never imagined when I was a youth growing up in, in church, uh, when they would come over to the house for Bible studies or whatever else, that this is where I would be one day. Uh, they thought maybe they'd visit me, but probably not in the church. <laughs> but I'm here because God saw more in me and maybe they did as well than I could have possibly imagined I may not have been man's choice but I do trust that for this period of time I am God's choice praise be to the Lord listen God will never ask you to stand without first placing the courage and strength within your heart to do so you may not realize that it's there, but God does, because he's the one who placed it there. So why not allow God to take you with his tender hand and remove the doubt to reveal what he has placed in our hearts? Gideon may have had doubts and fears, but God wasn't asking him to stand alone against the Midianites by his own power and based on his own abilities. The Lord wasn't sending him out to be devoured by his enemies, but as a brave and mighty warrior marching in his strength. I know we will all face times when it appears as if the enemy will soon overtake us. 
but remember that God is absolutely sovereign and in complete control. When we realize that we're not standing in our own ability, but in the Lord's, we'll be well on our way to becoming victorious. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? When God calls us to do something, you need to trust that he will provide. Gideon was perhaps a humble man, if not a fearful man. He wasn't a man of great strength or experience, and yet he faced a host of brave men who were well prepared for battle. They may have enjoyed the best in modern warfare weaponry at that time, but Gideon had the Lord, and the Lord would provide the resources necessary to overcome the enemy. The Lord has called us to do a good number of things that we will never be able to do on our own. But the battle isn't ours. It belongs to him. When God calls us to love others who are difficult to love, he will provide the grace we need to love, even our enemies. When the Lord tells us to make disciples for those who have trespassed against us, he will provide the grace we need to do that, we, that which we cannot do on our own. If the Lord calls you to be a missionary, talk to your neighbor, confront sin, contend for the faith, he will provide the way which we cannot accomplish by our own strength or abilities. I'm not even sure that we can even begin to comprehend what the Lord is able to provide. He delivered the Israelites in the face of certain death at the Red Sea. He brought them victory through a shepherd boy with five smooth stones. The world would have us believe that we must accept defeat. But please hear me when I say this. We have more than enough through Christ to overcome the enemy and accomplish great things for his glory. Listen, we've already overcome all that Satan had to offer, or he's already overcome all that Satan had to offer. We are victorious in him. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will up uphold you. Uh, I'm sorry, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. As we work towards the conclusion of our message this morning, we're going to skip down to Judges chapter 7, verse 7. Now, one thing I want to make clear before I go on to this verse is that God made a very specific call to Gideon to lead the Israelites into war. God's not calling us to go into war like he did Gideon, but he is calling us to forgive. He is calling us to love. He is calling us to make disciples. He is calling us to do a lot of things. He is calling us to contend for the faith. He is calling us to persevere till the end. And we may have doubts that we can do those things. But if God has called us to do those things, then we need to trust that the Lord will empower us and equip us to do those things. So very quickly, let's, uh, let's go to 7-7. Now, if you join us Wednesday night, we're gonna, we'll end up discussing more of this passage uh, from Gideon, and we'll, we'll talk even about uh, the, the idea of the fleece. I know many people will say, well, you know, I know you're trying to seek the God's will, so why don't you put out a fleece? It's not really biblical. Um, and, and if you want to talk more about that, then join us Wednesday night, and we can talk about why laying out a fleece before God isn't biblical. Nowhere does it tell us to do that. But hopefully that at least if you rouses your curiosity enough to join us in conversation Wednesday night. But here's what it does say in Judges 7.7. And the Lord said to Gideon, With the three hundred men who lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hand and let all the others go, every man to his home. Now this skips a whole lot. Now maybe you'll go home and, and, you'll, and you'll read this and, and, uh, and study some of this to see what was going on in that passage. But to make things a little quicker, we'll skip that and get to Gideon's three hundred men. 
You see, the mission that God had given, given Gideon was an impossible mission with man. He starts out with 32,000 men, which is an awfully low number compared to the armies that they were about to face. They were already way outmanned, way outgunned, if they had guns, but they were way, way behind as far as numbers. And what does God do? God reduced the number from 32,000 to 300 mighty men. Now, wait a second. If God is our provider, why wouldn't he simply provide more men? Why wouldn't he create something that we could have more men in our army than they do in their army? Perhaps we could avoid the fight altogether. If our troops, if our numbers far outweigh theirs, wouldn't we just kind of have a smile on our face and take delight and say, man, this is, this is easy. But God is our provider. Why wouldn't he simply provide more men? Why would he take the number of warriors instead of increasing? Well, I think it's because God understands the hearts of men. He knew that if they'd conquered the enemy with a larger army, they would have believed that it was because of themselves. It was because they had overcome their enemy. <clears throat> There was no way. It wasn't humanly possible. 300 men were no match for the Midianites. Judges 7, verse 12, says this, just to give us kind of a clue in verse 12. And the Midianites and, and the Malachites and all the people of the east lay along the valley like locusts in abundance, and their camels were without number as the sand that is on the seashore in abundance. And he's got 300 men. You see, Gideon was going to have to rely on the Lord to defeat the enemy, and this would require faith. I suppose to one degree or another, this is one area that we're all lacking in. In this life, we will face situations, perhaps many, that are far beyond our control. You know, situations that quite naturally cause us to worry ourselves to death about what the outcome will be. But make no mistake, a lack of faith will hinder our progress in the work which God has called us to do. The work that the church is responsible for is overwhelming. And one thing I will guarantee you is that we'll never accomplish it without the Lord's help. Each and every one of us needs to develop a faith like Gideon, march and, and march confidently into battle, and trust the Lord to give us victory. Without faith, we will accomplish very little. But through faith, we can accomplish much. In fact, the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to even please God. Now, once again, God hasn't called us to rescue Israel from the hand of Midian. But he has called us to obey him. He has called us to do his will, make disciples, forgive, love, show compassion, be quick to listen and slow to speak, to contend for the faith, to pray and rejoice always. To be the church, what God has called us to do, we must do. And here's the good part. He's not calling you to accomplish all of these things by your own ability. He wants you to learn to trust him and trust what he can do through you. We need more folks like Gideon in our day, those who will answer the call and trust the Lord. We don't have to accept what the world offers. The work of the Lord can continue to prosper in us if we do it through God's power and his way. You know, this is one of the, the great things of, of God's word. And one of the reasons that I love uh, scripture so much is because it doesn't always paint a pretty picture of all the characters in the Bible. There are a few that you can't find a whole lot, if anything, negative about. Well, Gideon's not really one of those people. Gideon isn't the best example that we have. But guess what? 
in the book of Hebrews, he's listed in the hall of faith, right? By faith, right? He came to the point where he knew he couldn't trust in his own abilities, his own talents. He could, he could do nothing by himself. But by faith, he took 300 men and defeated armies. Do you know what we can do if each and every one of us decides in our hearts to have faith that God can do and accomplish what he's claimed that he will accomplish through us if we just obey, if we just show some faith? Yes, he's going to fall. He has other flaws. He's going to make some bad decisions coming up after this event. But he demonstrated his faith and his trust in the Lord that God would keep his promises. And church, we need to feel the same way. We need to understand the same thing. If God has called us to do something, who are we to question God? If God has called us to do something, he has a purpose for that. Our responsibility is to obey. Now, in this story, they came out victorious. But I can tell you this. Just because you've obeyed the Lord doesn't mean that every th single thing you do in life is going to turn to gold. Right? It's not mean you have the Midas touch. Some of us are going to do exactly what God has called us to do, and we are going to suffer greatly for it. But this is where faith comes in. Despite the fact that terrible things may happen to me, Lord, I will trust you. I will do as you've commanded. That's the church. That's who we are. And that's who the people of this world have to see. They have to see us obeying God's call in our lives. They have to see us treating one another as, as, as Christ would treat others. Listening with the same open ears and open heart, showing compassion, being gracious to others. Folks, we need more Gideons. But here's the one thing I want you to remember. And this is, uh, I guess, the title of the sermon. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for the time to come together. We thank you for the example that we have in Gideon. We thank you, Lord, that uh, although he makes some questionable decisions, that he did demonstrate great faith in you. And you showed him and you showed us that even with little resources, even with little abilities, Lord, if you have called us to something, that we can accomplish great things through you who give us strength. So, Lord, we ask that you would give us the courage that we need this morning, each and every day, in fact, to live according to your will, that you might be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen.